Hello, and welcome to another edition of Azure Every Day. My name is John Bloom, and I'm a lead consultant at Pragmatic Works Consulting. And I want to talk today about Azure, Databricks, and how we can integrate with the Azure DevOps. So when we think of Azure DevOps connected to Databricks, there's really two primary things we're focused on. One is the Git, and that's how we store our notebooks over time in iterations, and we can look back in time and see how things change and also retrieve prior versions. Another nice feature is the DevOps pipeline. So the, dev, the DevOps pipeline allows you to deploy notebooks to different environments. So let's say you have uh, coding going on in development and people save their code back to Git and you want to release that to test so people can test it and find the bugs. So let's go ahead and see how that's done. So as you can see, we have our Azure Databricks service stood up and we clicked on the launch workspace and here's the workspace. And you can see that the cluster has been started. So in order to get the Git integration to work, we click on over to Admin Console. And from there, we click on Advanced. And at the very bottom to here, you'll see that the Notebook Git version is enabled. So that's requirement number one. The second thing we have to do is go into our Git integration. And at, as you can see, it's dimmed out because we've already connected. But if we click on Change Setting, there's two other options we could have chose, GitHub and Bitbucket Cloud. But in our case, we're using the DevOps. So let's go ahead and open a notebook. And you'll see over here to the right, there's a green checkbox, check mark. And what that means is that the Git is synced. And the way that we know that is because we already have our DevOps account open here at dev.azure.com. And within here, you have a variety of, of features, one being the repos and another being the pipelines. The first one we'll select on is the repos. And if you wanted to create a new repo, you would simply click on the box here and say new repo. But we already have one created, and this is what it looks like. And what it does, it contains a series of files. In this case, they're notebooks. And one of those files is right here. So you can see that the reason that exists here is because we saved it here and it is synced. So that's a nice feature. And what we can do is click on another notebook, perhaps this one, and we can see over here that it's also synced. Let's open another one, notebook one, and it's not linked. So in order to link it, you click on the hyperlink, you click on the link, and it already pre-defaults because it recognizes it from the other one, and we click Save. So we'll go ahead and click Save, and then we can uh, add in to Git, click Save, and all of a sudden, it's going to commit, and it's going to sync, and the name of this notebook is called Quick Start Notebook 1. So we'll jump on over to our uh, repo in Git, and there it is. It just showed up. That's how fast it is. So that's a very nice feature for storing your database objects. A lot of time, you know, people lose code. They want to see prior versions. So that's a great feature. So another thing I'd like to show is the pipelines. Now, pipelines within the DevOps framework allows you to deploy code seamlessly. And in this case, we've already created a pipeline. So let's go ahead and, and open this one. And we'll click on the Edit button so we can see the contents. And what this means is... We can deploy code seamlessly, continuous integration using this feature. And what it does is we have a pipeline and we named it and it uses a Windows server that resides on the Windows and it's in a pool. And when you start up this job, it's going to retrieve the next available Windows server. It's going to do its thing and then go back into the, its pool. The next thing is we specified the Git repo. And you can see here that we connected to our Azure DevOps and our master branch. The next thing is our agent. There's not much configuration there. But in this case, for the DevOps, we had to install this extension because it's not there out of the box. But the one I chose is a Microsoft extension. So this is the one I've been using lately for the uh, deployment of the notebooks. And the first thing we do is we specify our URL space. The second thing we do is access the token. So where's the token? Well, if we go back to our user settings, we'll see here that we generated this token. And it's so simple to do. You click on the generate. You say new token, for example, and how long do you want it to last? 90 days, or if you leave it blank, I believe it's infinite. Yeah, so that's how you create your token. You, you need to write that down immediately and store it somewhere because once it's gone, it's gone. So what we do is we place that in here, and then the next thing we do is we have another um, item in our workflow, and this is where we deploy the notebook. So we want to specify the folder and the root, so everything under there. So what that means is, if we wanted to kick off this job, essentially, you just have to um, run the pipeline. So you say run pipeline, you can um, click the button here, run. And what it's going to do 
in our case, it's kind of redundant where we're, we're taking our notebooks from dev and pushing them back to dev. But think, you know, strategically, we could have a test environment, a UAT environment, and a prod environment. And we could specify those server names, you know, after they're configured and push to those seamlessly. So there's not a lot of, a, it cuts down on the administrative tasks. So it's really pretty cool. And I will say that uh, this DevOps pipeline, as well as the release pipeline, is, is the best thing since, you know, bread. Uh, I find it tremendous a asset ars to have a skill in your arsenal because it's so powerful. And we use this a lot for not just our data bricks, but for data factory, key ball, storage count, um, database for a variety of other things. And what it's doing, it has a nice audit trail. So these greens are good. If it was red, that's not as good. And then these are the steps that just happen. And you can see that it was successful. And one other thing to notice, I was watching a video yesterday and it said something that I hadn't thought about, but this is basically a YAML file and that YAML file can be stored also in another Git. So you can see the iterations over time. So what we did in this demo is we talked about the Databricks integration to Git, and we also talked about the DevOps pipeline. If you want to discuss Databricks or have questions on Azure or Power Platform, click on the link below, and we'll be glad to talk to you and discuss it further. Again, thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye.